Once again, I welcome you all to the lecture series of Mechanics of Solids. Today, we are going to discuss about the Maxwell's Reciprocal Theorem, which is another interesting topic in the strain energy methods. So, Maxwell's Reciprocal Theorem is something which is related to the deflection happening in beams. Right? So, if we take the case of a beam where two loads, F1 and F2, are applied. Okay. So, if you, if you take the case of F1, F1, we can say that some deflection has happened due to the application of load at the location of 1. And simultaneously, we have a deflection at 2 also. Similarly, when you apply load F2, we have a deflection at 2 as well as we have a deflection at 1. That means, if we consider a beam like this, upon the application of load X1, there has there is a deflection like this. Right? This was F1. Now, and after the application of F2, what happens is, you have an F1 here already and upon the application of F2, this was the initial deflection curve. Now, it has changed something like this, right. So, it has got two parts. One, if you take the location at 1, it has got two parts. One was the deflection caused by the load, 1. And second one was the, this is, let us consider 1 and 2. 1 was, the deflection 1 was caused by the load F1 and 2 was caused by the load 2, F2. Similar is the case of 2. If you take this case, 3. 3 is the deflection happened at 2 due to the load at 1. And if you take this as 4, 4 is the deflection happened at location 2 due to the application of F2. Right. So, if I write the deflection at 1, I can say that it has got two part x11 plus x12. And if I write the deflection at 2, I can say it has also two parts x22 plus x21. Now you might be wondering what is this 2112 like that. I will explain that. See xij means deflection at i due to load at 1 load at j, load at j, that's the meaning, xij means deflection at i due to a load at j, that means x12 means it is a deflection at 1 due to a load at 2, x11 means it is a deflection at 1 due to a load at 1, so if we consider x1 we can say that it has got two parts x11 which is nothing but the deflection at 1 due to a load at 1 and x12 it is a deflection at 1 due to a load at 2. Right. Similarly, you can read the value of x2. Right. Now, we have learned different sets of equations. For example, for example, uh, if you take the cantilever with the n load, we have derived an equation for delta is equal to, or say y is equal to w l cube divided by 3 e i. Right. And we have derived some special, uh, derived some general equations for some general applications. But the method that we we followed can be used to derive the deflection at any location, right? You can you can derive an expression to find out deflection at any location, right? But as the question changes, as the law changes, as the location changes, the nature of the equation is going to change. That means it may become very very complex. It may become very lengthy, right? But definitely we can derive an expression. So, if you look here, if I, uh, so uh, from this equation, what I can conclude is that, what we can conclude is that we have, diff we, ca we have a general procedure that we can follow to derive an expression at different locations, right? That means, if you want to find the deflection happening at 2 due to the load at 1, or if you want to find the deflection at 1 due to a load at 1, you can have an equation. Right. I am not going to derive all those equations, but we can have an equation. Right. Now, if you consider say, say y, let's say let the load applied is F1, then it can be said that F1 into L cube divided by 3 E i. Right. That means if you consider this as a factor, such kind of factor is going to repeat in different, different, different uh, equations. So, if you derive an equation, definitely you have such kind of common terms. The 3 may not be there, some other values will be there, expression will be somewhere uh, 
big but definitely we can say that there is a term that is going to be multiplied with f1 which is going to give you some value of deflection y if that is a scenario how can we introduce such kind of terms into our strain hands i will say that i will define this term as alpha right that means if i want to calculate the value of x11 i have an alpha term here then alpha is f11 this alpha 11 means it is a term like this which is going to give you the value of x1 or deflection at 1 due to a load at 1 that means alpha 11 f1 but similarly you have a term alpha 12 when multiplied with f1 going to give you the deflection at 1 alpha 11 uh, f1 plus alpha 12 f2 right now similarly if you write f x2 i can say that it is alpha 22 f2 plus alpha 21 f1 right because here f12 is the result of the load f2 that's why i have used f2 over there and you have a factor alpha 12 when multiplied something like this with f1 f2 will give you the value of x1 that is how you have to understand the term alpha okay so if we talk about the strain energy what is the total strain energy when we apply this load simultaneously right we know that w is nothing but half into f into x right so if i apply these two equations i can say that it is going to be half into f1 x1 plus f2 x2 so let's substitute all these things together into this equation say 1 i and this is 1 and 2 if we substitute it over here say a a that's going to give you the total load as so sorry total strain energy w or can be called as u no issues can be called as 1 by 2 into alpha 1 1 f 1 square plus alpha 1 2 plus alpha 2 1 into f 1 f 2 plus alpha 2 2 f 2 square you kindly substitute all these things you are going to get an equation like this say this is capital A now let us say how the equation is going to change when we apply the load one by one Let's say I have applied a load F1 here and it has created an X11 here. So the total strain energy W is nothing but half into F1 into or F1 square into alpha 1. Right. Now, when you apply a load here, you have a deflection here, but we are not considering that when you write the equation here because we don't have a load here. So it is equal to 0 right now. So F2. 0 into x12 is going to give you the value as 0. So that term will not be there in the equation. Now, so this is going to be equation number 3. Now what we do is we have applied f2 here. Initially there was no f2. Now we are going to apply f2 after the application of f1. So what happens when we apply f2? When you apply f2, you had a uh, deflection x11 already. Along with that, you have a deflection x12. So, when you apply the load f2, you have an x22 here. I haven't written x21 here because since f2 was absent there, we cannot consider the value of x22, x21. Right now, if you take the second case, when you apply the f2, you can say that w is nothing but. W is, is equal to half into F2 square into alpha 2 plus F1 F2 into alpha 1 2. That is how it is going to be. Now you might be wondering where the half sign. It will not be there. The reason is that. See, when, when I apply the load F2, f1 was already existing there 
so the average load at one is equal to f1 it is not f1 by 2 see when you have a system like this okay before the application of load the initial load was zero now we are gradually applying the load f1 then the final load is going to be f1 so the average load is going to be f1 by 2 this f1 by e, by 2 is being considered when we take the strain energy as half f1 into x right now keeping this in your mind if you look at this equation this system we can say that since f1 was initially acting over the system the initial load itself was f1 the final load was f1 so it is going to be f1 plus f1 by 2 it is nothing but f1 itself 2 f1 by 2 f1 that's the reason why we don't have a half sign over here so the equation is going to be 1 by 2 into alpha 2 to f2 square plus alpha 1 to f1 f2 i will rename this equation as b and definitely we know that irrespective of the method of application of load the total strain energy has to be equal so a has to be equal to b right that means these two values has to be the same sorry i have i forgot to write one more time here sorry sorry i will add it right now plus we have 1 by 2 into alpha 1 1 f1 square right now we have the equation and i will call this as b and as i told these two has to be same irrespective of the uh, method of application of law total strain energy is going to be same so what we are going to get is when you equate these two i can say that it is going to come something like this 1 by 2 into alpha 1 2 plus alpha 2 1 is equal to alpha 1 2 i can say that alpha 1 2 plus alpha 2 1 is equal to 2 alpha 1 2 right so i all together i can say that alpha 2 1 is equal to alpha 1 2. this is how the maxwell's reciprocal theorem is stated that means it states the relationship between 1 and 2 so in general i can say that the factor that contributes towards the deflection at 1 due to a load at 2 and vice versa are one and the same that means alpha 1 2 is equal to alpha 2 1 so that's enough for this session In the next session i will discuss about the castle-ganos theorem 1 and 2 which is very important to find out the deflection of a system even though it's very simple we will have a brief discussion on that in the coming class so till then bye